Who is your daddy and what does he do? Who is your daddy and what does he do, Dan? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Happy Hour-ish on Exotica TV. Episode 19 for those that are keeping track. Uh, I'm your host, Jay. This is my, my best buddy, Dan. Hey, Danny boy, what's happening? What's up, hetero life bait, Jay? That's right. How you doing? How you holding up, man? How you doing? How you doing? Who is your daddy what? and what does he do? I am... Oh, I was the director of the interior under President Johnson. Yes, yes, you were. That was I, I. I wanted to pick one of your more prestigious titles. Um, and wait, and you wore hammer pants to your eighth grade graduation. Yes, I did. Okay, both, that's both, good. both true facts. So, um, so uh, happy uh, National Raspberries and Cream Day. Is that what? That's where we've sunk. That's where. Oh, well, right it's now? that. It's also National Lighthouse Day, International Beer Day. Um, Battle of Boyaca Day in Colombia, and uh, or if you're watching, uh, what's that show? Ninety Day Fiance, the one guy, Colombia. Colombia. That's the way he says it. The I fucking guy. love Ninety Day. Fiance. And it's also Purple Heart Day. <laughs> Dude, because it, of you. Does it make I, me a bad person? Yeah, I think it might. But you know what? I don't give a shit. Like I'm, I'm sticking with it. I, I, I am now. I'm actually like, I'm so through Ninety Day Fiance. I've seen all the shows. So. I got nowhere to I go. I haven't seen all of them. I just started. Well, I got sucked in, you know, from you guys. So sucked. it's just fucking. It's Dan just got awful. Sucked. Sucked. Not by you. Sucked. So thank God. Yes. Um. What else? What, what, what else? Uh, dude, uh, I'm. I am. What are you doing today, Jay? I, what did you do today? You know what, what I do? You, do? you know what I did today, Dan? Um. Got up this morning. Went to the chiropractor because I believe in those kind of that kind of voodoo medicine. Um. I then went over to the office. We've been spending a couple of days a week back in the office, uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, today I snuck over there for a little bit. I did some baking, um, and you went to the office to bake. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. What'd you bake, Jay? I just baked stuff, you know. Kind I, of stuff. I just crispy green stuff. Um, I made some rice crispy treats. I made some rice crispy treats with uh, with uh, Chex mix. Um, you know, I, I, these so like intermittent, at the same time. these intermittent trips to Vermont over the course of this week or over the summer have been a, a fabulous thing. And so, yeah, we're, we're loaded up and ready to go. And in fact, I will be back on the road again next week. Um, oh, great. with, uh, with a new laptop in hand though, because okay, yeah, that's a good idea. the old, can one we now. afford, can we afford a new laptop? No, we cannot afford a new laptop. <laughs> um, the business can't, we, I can't personally, but you know what, Dan? I did it anyways. You know why? Because I invest in myself. You know what? I, I invested in my 130th Amazon Prime order today of the year. 130 this year. My dog has pig ears coming to her soon. 130 orders. Who would have, what, what did we do without Amazon? Like, remember back in the day when you wanted to buy something online and you bought it on eBay? I want a wish list. I want to be like one, one of our guests tonight. I want a fucking wish list. <sighs> Seriously. I'm going to put on pig Dan, ears you gotta, there. You need to show your butthole more. A, a more, cover, a more cover for my little does. Blackstone grill thing. You know, and I got a house full of people, by the way, too, because that fucking the tr tropical storm or hurricane whose name I can't even say. What is it? Isa Isa Isa? I don't know. I don't even I don't, I don't even think I heard the name of that one. Dude, it's fucking you wouldn't believe what here in Jersey what it is. We're not, Jersey's not built for hurricanes. It's, it's not shittier than it usually is, is it? <laughs> Dude, it's fucking fucking pretty <laughs> shit. And you know, I'm the only one who has power, so everybody's at my house, you know, so I mean, and look, I love having everybody here, my family here and everybody, but my girlfriend and everybody, but it's just like fucking, you know, she's at work. My brother's here. I got to talk nice. My daughter decided to come over for the day from her mother's house. So, cause she was bored over there. So she's here three fucking dogs. I'm losing my fucking you should, mind. You should eat the dogs. No, I will not. Um, I do have whiskey. <laughs> I do I, have weed and we, cheers, and, Danny boy. To 19 Here, episodes. To 19 episodes. Jesus Next Christ. week's our 20th may there, episode. May there not be 19 more. And it's nice. Jay, <laughs> actually, both of our guests showed up tonight. Both. It's amazing. I you think know? we put and, the fear of God in the, the yeah. last week. Last <laughs> week, I think. It, yeah. Nobody will ever cancel on us if they ever book with us again, but after <laughs> that one. But look, I mean, I don't even know, you know what to say. I mean, both of these uh, lovely women have been with us for you know, a long time with exotic as one we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, she was going through some shit, but she'll inform us. And the other, we were hoping to see a lot more this year because she was supposed to be our dungeon mistress for the interactive exotica dungeon. But uh, let's just bring him in. Jay. Bring him in. Dan. The, one, 
One and only Kelly Shabari and Madam Skin Diamond. Hello. Hello. What's up, everybody? What's up? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Welcome, welcome to Cheers. Cheers. Happy welcome hours. To the happy hour-ish. Um, it, does this it, because it's the 19 episodes? Does it mean it's been 19 weeks of quarantine? It's been actually more than because uh, we missed an episode. We took a week off because we had uh, Lisa and technical difficulties. So, so we didn't. I mean, we're, we're 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 like 20 weeks in. It's been a long time. <laughs> I feel like, dude, we talked to Skin like at the beginning of this thing, and now all of a sudden, like it's been like f- yeah. four months since then. Like, you guys got you guys got OnlyFans to fall back on. You know, your hundred thousand dollars a month, whatever the fuck <laughs> you people are making. <laughs> you know, we have. You know, we we made on this show fifty five dollars, fifty six dollars. I'm sorry. Yes, Dan. We're that we're. Buys you some weed. That doesn't even buy me weed in Jersey. It's fucking six. Oh, right, because it's expensive where you are. Plus tax. <laughs> so you guys will all see this little thing scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Like it's going this way, that way. I don't know. It goes this way. But Whoop. it says just a tip. You can share with us on here on uh, streamlabs.com slash exotica and uh, give us some fucking money so Jay can get a, a properly operating TV, afford that laptop computer he already bought. And we have children. Ta-da. There you go. We have children. We have children, damn it. That $55 doesn't get them pizza. No. It's I, what I want. What I really, we need to figure out is what are we going to spend our $55 on? Like maybe 65, 70. I mean, we got to make this thing epic. We've worked, you know, a few months for it. So we, we should, we should blow it in an extreme way. Pizza and wine. Pizza and wine. That's a, my vote. It's a steady. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a nice, uh. There you go. It's hydrating. So <laughs> what what are you know the 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 obvious question like now as we're getting in the work in and out of the quarantine then back in the quarantine and things are open but they're closed and like people are going back to work but they're not and schools are open but they're not like what kind of like got? it's kind of like our love life <laughs> me and you it's in it's out you're open, it's all but you're over. not yeah your eyes say come hither but you don't yeah, it's definitely been a a, a head fuck, hasn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I've just been like cozying up in my cottage with my cats, making smut. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Understandable. <laughs> And, and I mean, and, and so obviously the thing, you know, we, we did three months of, of Exotica TV shows where we were talking to folks like, is it OnlyFans? I mean, is OnlyFans like the driving just like every day you get up and you deal with, you know, OnlyFans or, or are there other things that you've been doing to keep yourself busy? Um, I'm, I'm, I've only started OnlyFans. So I was like, I'm going to get back into the business right after AVN because I have the most amazing timing in the world. And uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do OnlyFans and I'll do a bunch of other stuff. And then the quarantine hit. So I'm, I've am i actually been trying to study and learn how to do OnlyFans better. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I have my PR company, so that at least I have something going on for that. And what about you, Skin? Have you, are you, are, have you mastered it? Have you, like, there's got to be so many, like, little kind of things that you can do. Do you learn something new all the time with it? Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like I'm kind of in the same boat as Kelly. Like, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to come back a little bit. I'm going to start an OnlyFans. And then the pandemic hit, and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're well, literally welcome, like... Welcome back oh, to adult oh. 2020. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you, you know, back. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my 30s. I'm not... I, like, I don't grasp to the new tech things as easily. Right. So, so I'm like, you know, still figuring it out, figuring out how I want to do it as well. Like, I, cause I, you know, I don't want to do it the same way that everybody else does, but I definitely have friends that have been successful with it. So I've been right. able to like, you know, um, but I actually, um, I've been using this time also to really harness, um, long distance slave training, which is something that I had never done before. I had only done in person. That makes two of us. I've never done that either. <laughs> But it's it's definitely a learning curve because you know the, like like the, like I can't just hit someone to correct them. Right. It has to be more of a mind game. So it's it's definitely different from from what I was training to do before. So but it's been really fun. When, it's, it's, you, when you say different, though, like I mean, right? Your your classic scene. I mean, you're obviously like in in a room with somebody and able to kind of wield that power, right? But like on camera, 
it's got to be uh, how long, how did you even kind of come across that? And like, what was the growing process to figure out exactly how it worked? It was definitely, um, I mean, I, I, again, I, I have many friends that, um, had started doing it already. So I was just like, okay, this, this seems cool. And I, I definitely learned just from, you know, doing it, I think just, yeah you know, uh, learning how to like, you know, make it more of them doing things while I instruct and that kind of stuff, which is, it's, I mean, it's fun. And it's also kind of, uh, is it harder, easier? Because I mean, if I tell them to hit themselves and they have to, they have to do it properly, I have to tell them how to do it. You know, it's definitely a little bit more involved in that sense. I can't just rely on my presence and my energy in person, which I do quite a lot. You know, I like to, eye contact and you know just let things flow that way but it's been really fun um and i've i've enjoyed having long distance slaves and it's also kind of convenient for me because then i can just do it in my room and i'm very i don't even have to go oh (laughs) yeah i mean that's that's the the thing that we're worried the most about and like I, i think everybody in the industry is slightly worried about is like what makes people come out of their house now you know what i mean like you're going to you're, you're, you're that's kind seriously of about it. It, it, groceries and weed that's right. kind of about it everything I, else i can order i can not order even wine weed. you can, can order, order you can order yeah. weed i mean like you can you, well i can but there's like in, in vegas a lot of the delivery places have a um a minimum order right. which is way more than i personally need to have around me right. so um <laughs> like, yeah, but if you go I, and you drive yeah. through then good. there's like you know you only need to spend like 30 bucks or something so okay. that makes sense well here's and so um, Skim, we had seen you in the beginning stages of Exotica, you know, TV, you came on here. Kelly, we haven't seen you in fuck. well, we haven't seen you guys, either of you guys at a show in a while, but Kelly, we haven't even seen you at all anywhere in like Welcome back years. to the public. Welcome Thank back you. to the public. I know you went through some shit. Um, you want to talk about yeah. it a little bit? Um, so I was like on a roll. I was doing some really great stuff. I was working with Wicked. I got into Penthouse. I was doing like really fun, creative, awesome, big things. And then a month after the penthouse shoot, I found out I had thyroid cancer. So um, I was like, okay, I'm going to shut down now. (laughs) Uh, Got the surgery. Um, The neat thing is I got to pick my surgery date. And because I'm a perv and a dork, I got to pick 6-9 as my surgery date. Nice. Um, Got my thyroid taken out. And then, like, over the course of the next year, I because my thyroid was actually working again, like I wasn't on a diet or anything, but then I lost 80 pounds. And so then I had to like figure out, okay, everything's all flat and pancakey. So I now got to rebuild stuff. Um, and so that took another year. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah. No, it's like, you I know, feel like I it's really, going to happen really to me like, after like quarantine. Curves. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm only kind of like halfway through all the reconstructive stuff because of quarantine and all the doctors have shut down their offices. <laughs> um, you know, but I got my boobs in, so I'm good. Nice. Nice. Well, we're glad to hear. So you're, you're, you're full remission, like good to go. At this oh yeah. Point? Thyroid awesome. cancer doesn't really come back cause it's okay. just a gland. You take it out and that's kind mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Interesting. But, um, but they told me, oh yeah, it's, it, and it's also a slow growing cancer. So it's not like something that you really, unless you're like far, far along, you really don't need to get a lot of chemo or anything. Right. It's really just a surgical procedure. Um, and so, uh, yeah. It was pretty, it was relatively easy. I was well, in the hospital for like three days. We're glad to have you back. We, we, yeah, have, back. we've had you at, a, a you know, a ton of shows kind of before your hiatus and look forward to having you at a bunch more back. We just look forward to anything at this point. We just want to look forward to a show period. Like, right. I, like it, it's this, every time I see an email about another postponement, I'm like, Ugh, it's like literally, it's, it's, like, calendar, it's like a template. You know what? It's like a template right now. It's like, <laughs> we, we take out Chicago, put in Miami beach to or Miami, take out Miami, put it, it, it's brutal. But you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, if people don't realize that, like, you know, we're not going back into a convention center until this shit's fixed. You know, I mean, yeah. like, I, if anything, we've proven here in the good old US of A that there's no possible way that we can actually, like, together beat this thing. You need, like, a shot, you know, because yeah. it's like, like everything else, the American way, it's like, shot. just give me the, the quick fix, you know, like, fix this shit and I'm going to move on my way. But, well, and especially, like, fans want to meet porn stars. They want to see our whole face. So, exactly. well, that's, 
Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've, we've had these conversations because it's like, Hello. okay, so, so, so say that, so say that it opens back up, right? And like, you know, Chicago's, you know, allowing 3,000 people a day to go through the convention center. And we do that. Like, how do you do that? You know, how, how do you, yeah. you know, uh, Exotica hotties, like, you know, do they stay on the stands the whole time? Like, after being wiped down, they can't move things. You Jay, know, show, the answer show, is like, you don't do any of this stuff. Yeah. 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 No, and it's, 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 fans are very like they're huggy people, you know, like they want to take photos with you, like holding you and like they're really respectful and they're not super gropey, but but they still want to no, have it's, it's a contact yeah. show for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know, honestly we're going to talking about that, um, you know, with the fans or whatever. I mean, do you think like. Like you say, they're not super gropey, but you know, basically, because your personality. <laughs> but let me tell stuff. you about my experiences. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, just, I mean, is it? I think it's like different for every girl, though, right? Because if a girl's like you know, super, super hardcore in her stuff, you know, if she's like filthy doing DPS and all this other stuff, you know, I don't. It's I think it's I've seen like girls. It's like some are super stand up. You know, the fans are really standoffish and scared. Sometimes they're really friendly. They bring gifts, whatever. I think it all depends on the girl, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've done like blow bangs and gang bangs, but at the same time, I'm my on Twitter. I try to be like super nerdy and dorky, and that's my persona. So most of my fans know know that about me. Like, nor- nerds yeah, like I'm not gonna like go out and do gang bangs every weekend. So, so, <laughs> so my my Skip, what about your fans? Um, well, I mean, my my fans have. I've uh, always been very respectful. I mean, I don't mind. Like, I was a stripper before as well. But I think that it also depends on, like, it's not just the girl. Like, some some person might be kind of, like, a little a little maybe weird and you don't maybe want them to grab your boob. But then someone else that you, like, vibe with a lot are going to well, be like, Well, nobody yeah, should be grabbing your boob in the show. Know? So, <laughs> I don't know. But, like, yeah, I, I feel like it kind of goes both ways in that sense. But... Yeah, I, 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 it's it's definitely a huge mixture. Like you see super nerdy people, and then people that just kind of want to get their memorabilia signed for the collection, and like talk for a little while, and then go on. And then, you know, it's it's always different. But that's why it's fun because it yeah. It, it keeps I always had the guys that were like, "Would you like some water? Would you like some cupcakes?" Like that kind of fan, so I was like, "Yes, cupcakes are awesome." <laughs> I, I had a I had an idea a while back, and we haven't done it yet. I, I got to do it. Um, Is it going to make us money? Yeah, once a show happens, okay. uh, I, I want to open a I want to run a booth that just sells flowers. Aww. Like if you, dude, you know, you know how much money you can make just dude, selling say no flowers. Stop. Shut up. Done. Shut up, Jay. Well, no, I, dude, don't I, even mention on here. We control it enough oh, that yeah, I would right. not I sell anybody else. Let anybody else sell flowers. Flower like, booth. Just so, so you know, we are the official flower. Like, By the way, my stepdad, he runs a flower sh- or he owns a flower shop. Uh, so there you so go. it's kind of like, you know, like those those girls with like the the basket with the roses right. that walk through like New York or whatever. Listen, you the thing is, is like there there's always that guy in every room. Like you put that bouquet of like a hundred roses up for like seven hundred dollars or whatever some dude's yep. gonna buy that rose you know buy that that bouquet of roses like you, yep. you just when we did the the fanny awards you guys were both around i think during during those when we were like in atlantic city and and, and doing the shows. i have i have both of them do you there you go so that's right you you were a double fanny winner um we yeah we we sold tickets and dan dan talked me <laughs> dan talked me into doing like front row tickets for some obscene amount of money and I was by like, talk, by talking into him, it was big. Jay, we should sell the very front tables for like for like a thousand dollars a ticket. And I'm nobody's like, gonna nobody's going to pay that. Like, that's crazy. Oh, no, that, that's how I, that. And that's then how talk into it. The, the, the first the first like 10 tickets bought were literally the people buying the tables at the front. Yeah. Yep. So Dan was right. Dan, Dan, Dan I'm giving you so, yeah. credit for Christ's sakes. Thank you. Take it and fucking like it. I'm, I'm not used you to know, that. I did have an idea for okay. how get um get around the like if we were to do the convention even though there's still some stuff going on right a way a fun way to take photos with fans and still you know socially distance just have them in the foreground and then they can like hold you in their hands <gasps> i love that so much <laughs> So like I would do that. Skin, that <laughs> yeah. is that is an amazing what, what idea. Is, what is stopping well, and vice us? vice versa, right? Well, what is stopping so, like, us from the fan could be on our hand, or we could be on their hand. Exactly. You could be like, <laughs> do you is, want to be held, or do you want to hold? Yeah. 
<laughs> what is stopping us from getting a ray gun and miniaturizing all of you and just carrying around a suitcase <laughs> of all of you and just putting that? You in know what's the funny? Pictures? That actually reminds me. I, I, and, and like I, Skin, you you may have had this. Like we had a, a, a Sammy, our social media girl that works at all of our shows. She was, she's little, she's like this little tiny kind of like peanut. Right. And one of her things was like, she, she never really drank. She never was too wild. She's like, my biggest fear has always been that somebody would just pick me up and take me. Like I'm small enough. I think that, I've like, heard her say that You can just like pick up a 90 pound person and just be like, you know, if you're a 220 pound dude, like, you know, and it was, I, it was the craziest thing to ever hear anybody say. I was like, I've never actually like thought of that she was she and then you look at her and you're like yeah you could somebody could fit you in a suitcase like yeah, you know, yeah, you know a really good like idea tiny. not abducting Wait. women yes that's a great idea here's another idea right we design we build like this box like almost like not a, like a barbie like an action figure box right and it's got the, the plastic there right so you could go in there and be safe and it like says like porn star or something on it yep. you know action figure <laughs> put your name on it you guys go in there and the fan stands next to you and you could be like the Barbie, oh, the Barbie cute. in the thing. I yep. Like see, and, and that's the beauty of this. Like as fucked see, up this, as all of it is. The beauty of this is that we're fucking high and we're figuring this shit out. <laughs> the real test will be in six hours if this is a good idea still. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's, hey, you ever been there? You, you have those, you know, you're like, whatever you may be doing or trip you may be on. Like, you're like, this is the greatest idea I've ever thought of. And then you wake up the next morning, you're like. What the fuck was that? <laughs> like, seriously? Did, did I actually think that that would work? Are we allowed to un unveil our, like, new, new little ventures name? I don't care. Which one? Care. Well, we, so, so we're, we're just doing, look, we're just trying to do anything, right, right now to survive. God knows when we're doing a show again. We're hoping it was going to be October 3rd uh, in Rosemont. We're probably, unfortunately, going to have to have a call this week with them. And then Jersey, who knows? But, yeah, we just don't know when it's been. And, fuck, it's been nine months since we've had a show yeah i was looking forward to dc like that was the one i was like i want to go to that one so right you know and it was like crazy so anyway you know we're just like trying to figure this shit out so we have this new idea we're launching a merchandise company and you know it's called mr zilla there you go you know, just a just a name but it means really nothing but everything at the same time and you know we're going to do some cool ass t-shirts with like yeah merchandise for you know stars like yourselves you know things like that some other cool shit but anyway, like our, our original idea, we came up with this name and we weren't really in love with it or anything. And just going back to what a magical, magical thing this is. It's like a magic wand. I got high as a motherfucker. I passed out. I woke up 15 minutes later, called Jay. I got the fucking name. This is true. This is actually <laughs> the, this is Jay, a, how, how a true story. Jay, how did you start? On a scale from one to 10, how high were you? Very high. No, you're you're right. No, it, it was. Um, I, I mean, my buddy Ted and I were sitting on a laptop at my computer. Like, hey, you know what? We can pretend to be these guys, right? All right, cool. Like, we'll fake it till we make it. And, Wait, hold on, you, know. you were sitting with Ted watching porn. No, definitely no. You just porn. said we could be like these guys. So you were obviously looking at porn. No, like we we honestly we were looking at uh, erotica LA. Was oh. like was the erotic LA was this like crazy ass event that went on out in LA. ABN yeah, well, owned cool. it. It was an amazing. They, they it was an amazing show until it wasn't an amazing show anymore. And um, and now all we have in LA is adult it? con. Oh yeah, now you got adult con. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Fucking. Have man. you ever been to adult con, either of you? Oh, I went to it once. Con. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So so let's hear it your all, adult con experience. Take just one time to go. Once. Does anybody just ever go once. twice? <laughs> no. My, no. most memorable, my most memorable uh, thing from that was buying a painting from the booth next to me. Was it that was like was it that was that was like the funnest thing that I did that I, that was, I really stuck at. We we used to get oh my god that dude Renault he was it a Velvet Elvis the the dude that owns Adolcon used to like when we first started he would he every time we'd put a new exhibitor up on our website he would call them and he'd be like. I can't believe you've signed up for that show. They have nobody. There would be nobody at that show. And like, they, and just like went on and Me, on and I on. I have this, I have this greenish suit <laughs> was, and this roller bag. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, no. but that was also, you, you have to remember too, like 
those were the days like when we started this thing avn in vegas was fucking huge like i mean it was at the sands expo center that shit was like they had double decker booths they had 250,000 square feet of space like it was a monster show and and erotica la was purportedly doing 45,000 people through the door which means like you know 12 maybe no 20 i don't know something like that so um they were but they were getting real numbers and so there was a lot more comp we had, we had all kinds of competition for uh, you know the first five or six years that we started this thing and now it's kind of you know we've specialized in it so much now that it's like once you learn it you kind of every there are very few cities that are trying to do an exotica that we're not trying to go into you know like yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. so we kind of have the the corner on that. Um, you but think it's really, a lot like all the websites that are up right now, like the, all the OnlyFans yeah. and the OnlyFans adjacent websites, mm-hmm. you know, um, whether it's just for fans or loyal fans or whatever. Um, at a certain point, like everybody's trying to compete in that. And then eventually it just kind of peters out into like out. one or two that does well yeah so you so uh, you, you some of you guys may remember when we first started hot movies was our presenting sponsor they were yeah. like everywhere hot movies was like the the thing they were from philly it was awesome um then they lasted through like 2011 or 12 and we, we got sued for ladies free friday in california and um they they this, like oh so interesting story the men's group that sued us, um, his former member of that men's group was the one that killed Jeffrey the, Epstein. The, no, the one that killed the uh, the judge's son in the oh, right. and, and the hu- shot the husband. Tried to kill her. Um, he was a member. I'm not of, surprised it was a men's group. Yeah, and so yeah, they, they're like a bunch of meninists because they're upset that they couldn't get in for free. Yes, yes. So we <laughs> so we went through that, and and hot and hot movies got sued because of it because they were our presenting sponsor, wow. and that was like at the end they were like, all right, we're cool, and then I love the hot movies people. They were awesome. Um, they were hot movies, hot movies for her, you know. Those were yeah. they. They were. How, how, how do they, like how the do they feel good, right like, now? Feminist stuff. So that was kind of cool. How does hot movies feel right now? Because every file photo of Ron Jeremy has <sighs> arrested or whatever is in a hot movie shirt. God damn! <laughs> Talk about the worst product placement of all time. Like yeah. that shit was like, hey, we got our shit on Ron Jeremy all day, every day. Oh shit! Oh, like, no. oh, what did we do? You know. <sighs> I think did, they had. Was it was it them or Game Link? Like one of them did like dinner with ron right or something like that that was like a did he, a did he fall asleep during the dinner you, you hope Probably that he fell asleep like 18 different times <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, my god so, they, well and, and it's in the news again this week because there was an la uh yeah i saw LA, that this morning la times article that came out and it sucks man it, it sucks to see you know all of us kind of you know it, as a collective whole it sucks to see you know exotic he's the representation of it though it it, yeah. it, it he's it, the poster child of the industry right now the one thing i will say is like you know with all of that stuff like we we were the quickest to act we we were the ones that you know uninvited or agreed well, with I think you guys were the first that got the complaint we told him he was no no we never we honestly we that was before we even got a complaint we no never we no complaint. no we got pushed we got pushed like when well no but we heard about it but i'm saying nobody came up to us after an incident in first person and said hey this happened right. to that, me that was the, the, the biggest like problem with that was like that spot where it's like you hear about stuff on twitter weeks and months after right and it's like you hear it and you're just like, dude, okay. So security, did you guys hear any of this? No. D- has anybody heard any of this? No. All you have is like this, you know, boiling Twitter following. And, and it was, you know, you walk, we walk a fine line of, you know, listen, at the end of the day, if we take anybody that's accused in the industry of something bad and say, you can't come in here, there's going to be a long list of, everybody gets accused of something bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's one of those things. At the same time, you know, uh, how do you make sure that this doesn't happen again? And you'll notice like our code of conduct and all of that stuff that we that we do, this, the quick tech security codes and stuff that we have, um, we're all in response to a lot of this stuff and, and the Me Too movement in general. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, we 
we were definitely nudged in that direction. And like when Ron started showing up in our social media as appearing at the show, we got a lot of like pushback from it. And mm-hmm. we were able to kind of take that, understand what was going on. And then at the end of the day, like we had to make the decision. We put the code of conduct in knowing that Ron would violate it in the first minute of the first day that he walked into the show and we'd throw him out. Right. Yeah. As it was, he didn't make it to that first show because we... Well, no, we just told him, we basically said it was like, you know, you are no longer welcome at the show. Why not? Yeah. Because we don't feel that it's a, your good representation right. and... We're not, not gonna we going to ban you. We're not going to go to the media <laughs> and scream about, how, you know, all of this stuff. We're just agreeing that you are no longer appearing at these shows. Well, what do you mean? Okay, I'm going to come. No, no, we're, no, you're not coming, Ron. We're agreeing <laughs> that you're not coming. <laughs> this so, isn't open for discussion. You're not going to come, right? Okay, great. Yeah. And then all this other shit breaks. And, you know, look, it, it's sad that, you know, I mean, the, the saddest thing is, is, you know, what is surfacing now of the, you know, the women that he, you know, hurt and disrespected and, you know, what they went through and everything like that. And I don't give a shit if it's, you know, an adult, um, you know, dentistry, freaking, you know, car sales, whatever, you know, shit, any no walk of life. I mean, that shit just doesn't go on. That's not how any of us were raised. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, look, Exotica is a place for everybody. Stars, um, cats, you know, stars, no, no cats. cats now. But star, no, no pets are allowed except for service animals because we have to allow those. But no, I mean we are all inclusive, right? We're all inclusive. You know, we try and represent you know every facet of the industry, every niche. Why can't you know, everybody every, just get along? Oh well, yeah, when adult, where uh, when Erotica LA or Adult Con, wh- whatever show Renault was doing was like no BBWs. Like you guys were like, oh, yeah. come on in. Like you guys were great. It you was. Know? It took me one show. Honestly, one day of one show in 2006 yeah. when we started this thing. I had this idea that you know, like I was a 26 year old kid, had no fucking idea, like you know, within the industry of like what was what. And I had my own ideas or misconceptions of like what it was. And it took, and then he met me (laughs) and it took one day of walking through the show and realizing that like, even something that you are not remotely interested in has such a huge fan base of people that are remotely, that that are remotely interested in it. And things that you are into other people don't give a shit about. Like, you know, it's, it's there, there literally is, I, I think that with Exotica, the most valuable people that come walking through the doors are the ones that like, that are different. You know, it, there, you can, you can go get your picture taken with, you know, 200 adult stars, but that one girl that walks in, that's, six feet eight inches tall and is like you know can pick you up and like squat you is the one that i'm gonna get my picture taken with (laughs) you know what i mean it's like that was the 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 outside of the norm is definitely like and i think it's fun for the fans too you know like like the the industry fans like they might you know come in like when i first got into porn i didn't realize plus size porn actually even existed that was like my first reaction when somebody was like you should try porn i was like there's no fat girls in porn um, because I had never seen it, right? Because right. like it, cable TV, cable cable porn doesn't show at the time wasn't showing plus size, and I wasn't raised with that. But then you go to like a show like Exotica, and you see like fetish people, and you see like people walking around with diapers because they're into that kind of play. You see plus size people. You see, you know, rubber doll on stage. Like it's so it's it's a little of everything, and it's so much fun. So, so. Uh, which kid, what was? I'm oh, sorry, Jay. Skin, what was like the weirdest thing? Like, I mean, you've seen, you know, because I mean, one of our top things at the show, we asked like the people surveyed what they come for, obviously the stars, but one of the top things is people watching. So, from the people watching, you know, state of things, like Skin, you go first. I mean, what was like the craziest thing you've seen at one of our shows? Like, you, like, you, yo, you've seen some fucked up shit. I love well, how you say skin, that. Skin was in the <laughs> deep in the dungeon, so um, she sees it all. <laughs> skin looks like a fucking like a evil like Bond villain, stroking her cat, sitting there. <laughs> yes um i've seen some fucked up shit i feel like i've seen more fucked up shit at like the after parties because that's when people really relax and that's when you really Very see some shit. Yeah, <laughs> i'm usually ducking out of the after party as soon as jay shows up i'm out of there i'm like all right i'm going to bed i'm fucking old yeah because there's like there's letting your freak flag fly and then there's drunk letting your freak flag yeah. fly and it's yeah. like a completely well, different there's, there's a lit up convention center and then there's a correctly darkened after party. You know, <laughs> right. the, the, that's that's how that works. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, but this is uh, going along what you guys are saying. This, this is why I love sex positive communities because everyone is so like for each other. It's like that's weird but cool. I'm glad that makes you happy. You know, it's why I fell in love with the fetish scene. Absolutely. But I think the the most surprising, I will say, the most surprising thing I saw was, um, and I'm very aware um, that some folks like um, to use. Uh, real dolls and things like that um mm -hmm. and they become very attached to them and i'm all for it but i think one of the most surprising things was when i saw someone with their real doll in a wheelchair taking her out to the convention and i was just like oh i've never seen that nice before. to meet you <laughs> cool <laughs> and your name is God, I love it. Mine, I, what, mine is always like there's there's those people, but there's also the guys that show up at every show. Yep. Yeah. Right. Tom, the, shout out, shout out to Thomas Manning. <laughs> the, 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 we have like the guy who carried wait, the old guy, wait, the older guy that carried the, the guy cooler. That on the cooler with the Polaroids. Yep. Yes. We actually had him oh, open. Yeah, that. That's exactly who I'm talking about. He goes his to every play, show. His, uh, the igloo playmate. Yes, show. That guy. We actually asked this him is... one time what was in there because we were like after a few years we were both curious and afraid. To ask him what was in there, like it might be like some kind of human organ or something, but just Polaroid. He, oh, just no, yeah. it's his Polaroid camera. Yep, yep. just he's just out of the camera case. Yep, but yep. that's probably like that guy's like some he kind was... of like you know, evil genius. <laughs> so when we were <laughs> when we when we he used to always you know he's everywhere and we were uh, he would always call five times a year, whether he got a real person or a voicemail, and he would be like. You guys need to do Exotic Atlantic City. Atlantic City is the place. Like it, you know. I, I, you know, I, I got a week off in February. I could make it to Atlantic City. He would, he would leave these voicemails, and we subsequently did Atlantic City. And when I yep. signed the contract, like this is one of the things that, like, I don't think the fans like realize. They just look at it like, oh, it's just some big business, and like, you know, nobody is really paying attention to me, and they send mean tweets, and they do the stupid shit that they do, and it's like. No, that like I signed that contract and I was like, Thomas Manning is going to be an excited motherfucker. Like this guy, like as I'm signing the Atlantic City contracts, like there's one random attendee that I just knew that he was like. And so I, I remember he called like the next day we announced it and he was just like, I told you Atlantic City would be great. I told you. you know, <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. And that was a good show. It was a fun show. You know, what's crazy is so I've. We were talking, I think we were, we were even on the air yet when we were talking. So my girlfriend and Jay both got me into watching this 90 Day Fiance because what the fuck are you going to do during this shit? I, I have no problem. I will surrender my man car, but this shit is fucking awesome. I so have yet to see that show. I hear I, there's this one it. guy, 90 Day Fiance. It's oh, watch it. yes. So there's one guy that pops up on there. This guy's obviously on a webcam site. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, the dude for the Russian chick that like ghosted him like five times, what's and then she name? showed up the fifth. Somebody answer us in chat what that guy's name is. There's got to be somebody else. That yeah, that guy crazy there. wig. Um, yeah, uh, Rich Richard. I don't know. I just anyway. I I saw this guy. He lives in Vegas, so be careful, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we saw this. It's okay, I never leave my house, so I'll be fine. And I'm like, I've seen this motherfucker. I've seen he's been at our shows. I think he's been in. A, he's definitely but been. But we at said ABN. that about the Tiger King guy too. The one, the okay. new Tiger. No, I met yeah. the new Tiger King guy. The 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 guy who owns it now. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the, the one that took it rag. over. The one that always wears like the Oakley hat or whatever. That like it's took. Rag. Is that the husband of yeah. the? His like business partner or whatever that came yeah, in and kind of like. Guy, the, yeah, I don't know. He's Jeff, the guy that Jeff wife or something. Jeff. Car yeah. Carol's partner. No, 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 no it's right. on the oh, other no. side. Anyway, I've watched this 90 Day Fiance. And by the way, Jay, I want to have either Big Ed, or Sweaty Eddie or whatever we call him, or uh, I want that other guy, Ericie and Larissa. That we all want those two on. No, let's get the hot Ericky. chicks on. Anyway, let's. I sorry. mean, why we? Why, like, I want to get the the dudes that actually like. It's all it's all stereotyped, right? It's like middle-aged white guys that are relatively wealthy <laughs> that that Gosh. go down and find like you know a 19 year old girl in like the philippines or whatever or you get like the older gentleman that like is the the going for the russian chick that whatever or my personal favorite the old white women that go after nigerian dudes that guy yes i have to look for that one dude it's, he's 
for dare. He had to do a dare or something. That, that's what I'm saying. And and like, but the thing is, is like half the of old, the time the old, you're uh, like, I think that I think that they're I think they're real. I like this this dude would not be going through this. I mean, I guess. Listen, if you live in Nigeria and you're like on the straits, like who cares? Like, I guess you could just no. But this guy who's you know, has a little bit of money. He's like 60 years old. Uh, I think his name is Rich. He's flying to fucking the Ukraine to meet somebody he off, met off of wife recap. Those are the, the, the rich old white guys. But wow. he, you know, he doesn't he doesn't say that. Oh yeah, we have we have video. Oh look, she sent me a, a smiley face emoji. She loves me. And he goes over there. He's been over there like four times yeah. and she's goes well, every time. That's the best. He's like, he's like, so I've tried to meet up like four times. Oh, so I've I, seen, I saw a, cl- a, a clip of that on So Facebook. I went to the Ukraine yeah. and she, you know, she had her little nephew's soccer game. So we couldn't meet up. And you're like, you flew to the Ukraine and, and she the- couldn't meet you. Because of an eight year old soccer game. Or like, there was there was a chick that went over to uh, from went from uh, where the hell was she like Connecticut or something to Australia to meet up with another chick that she fell in love with. Oh, uh, that was the YouTube on chick. Instagram, right? Yeah. Except they, you know, she had never been with a woman before. So and then she goes all the way to Australia and is like a chicken's out and doesn't want to do anything. Have, and have other any girls, of those like, relationships actually worked out, or are, do they all just crash and burn? I don't know, but they show like the little um, cutaways. Like, like I, I do somebody, know. You know so- I do know because I've watched 90 Day Fiance after the show. Um, and let me There's tell you. There's another show called After the Show. So, the funny thing is, is they have like, once it went popular, like like anything else, it's like, hey, how can we like bastardize this, bastardize this and like make money? And so they have like before the show, after the show, opposites attract this and that. Like they have a million different things. Wow. But yes, um, Every every season has one couple that has a chick that is just smoking hot, like that you know is like the model girl that like, and I I disagree. Not not any of them that I've seen. Really? Yeah. You're out of your mind. I'm not out of my mind. Or, or maybe I have lower standards than you. I don't know. But um, I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's it, it's it's a train wreck, and I enjoy why it it you know what honestly I enjoy TV sometimes that you can just like turn on and not think about like you're just like I. So I that's how I am with like home remodeling shows. You yeah, really? I'll leave like Chip and Joanna Gaines playing in the background while I'm like doing shit because I actually love because I because I like home remodeling myself so I'm kind of like oh yeah that's a cool idea. So Skin, are <laughs> you home remodeling cooking? great outdoors like what's your go-to like tv genre um if it's not oh sorry i thought you were asking me no okay skin um go-to tv genre is probably going to be fantasy or any kind of like other world like i want to go to another fucking world like doctor who shit like doctor who or harry potter i've been reading the books again um which isn't a show, but they're better than the movies, damn it. And, um, but also I, I do like, I don't know. I, I hop around a lot. I did like the, um, that real housewives show. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty funny. The, the Hollywood one. I didn't watch a lot of it, but I watched enough to be like, wow, this is really hilarious. It's, you know, we have, we have another episode or another show on boob to, or on uh, exotica TV called boob Tube every night or every what is it? Carrie. Tuesday yeah. nights. Dude, yeah, Jay, Jay, you are, by the way, Jay, you are beyond fucking high right now. Those <laughs> they, fucking brown, those Rice Krispie treats I know. kicked in. And, and so, and <laughs> yeah. last, Luckily, this, or really this week's, right this right? week's, <laughs> what's that? It's so red, right? Well, no, it's, you know what's I funny? I red on weed. I thought that was like a, a booze thing. <laughs> No, my cam. I think my camera is like oddly. See the exotic. You're like slowly getting like a sunburn. <laughs> no, you're like, dude. You're like red as can be. Oh. You may, you may want to get my weed. You should get your yeah, weed. Yeah, you, you go get your weed. Okay. okay. Seriously. You go get your weed. <laughs> I have to shoot later, so I can't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just be like, I'll be taking so, a nap. You, while she's running around, so you've been doing a lot of OnlyFans, right? You do, uh, you do clips for sale, also, right? And well, Sex we've been Panther. Been around forever. Um, right. But I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I'm old school, right? Like I'm 48 next month. So um, I'm, I'm an old school, like I, I enjoyed <laughs> the studio system very much. I uh, am not technically inclined when it comes to cameras. Uh, so it's, it's just been kind of a, a, a learning curve. So Sex Panther and OnlyFans is kind of like where I'm, I'm focusing my learning on right now. And then hopefully I can 
move on from there. And maybe the studios open back up by then. Who knows? So you guys both, and I know Skin, last time we spoke to you, uh, I know you, a, a few of us have musical backgrounds here, but I know you guys, I know you, you Rhodey, and Skin, you were working on um, you know, your own stuff, right? Your own music? Yes. Where's that I've, at? I've been working on it for the past couple of years. It's definitely been one of those, those uh, processes where you start something, you take it to a point, and then you go, you know what? We're going to start all over again. And there's been a lot of that. Fuck it, we'll do it again. Um, and but right now I've been working on a um, on an album that is a little bit more on the hush, but it's a completely different style than um, I've released previously, which is why I'm waiting till it's completely ready. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be releasing some uh, unreleased demos, some of my favorites from the past couple years and past projects that we're not maybe going to put out, but. I think that they shouldn't sit on a hard drive. So those will be going on my SoundCloud, uh, which you can you can uh, access on my website, raylandjoy.com. And then, so Kelly, you and Kelly, I was reading in here that you were a roadie. I was. So for what bands or? Um, <laughs> so I so when you're a roadie, you also tend I used to, to be, I used to be, I used to be a tour manager for bands. That's okay, why. So I, you, um, then you know this. So you have like the road crew and then you have like the local crew. So okay. I learned how to be a roadie in college. It was actually part of the, the college work study program because they had an arena on campus. So like my very first show, I was actually having this conversation a couple of days ago with a friend of mine. My very first show that I worked local crew for was Public Enemy Anthrax. Nice. Right? And I, and I worked <laughs> so, for Rush Artist Management who helped put that together. Oh, wow. So, um, so I did that and then I did, you know, basically any kind of tour that would come through the college, I worked local crew. So I have a whole bunch of local crew badge backstage passes from that. Um, you know, so you kind of, you don't stick with one genre you do like, I, you know, MC Hammer came through. Um, so I'm like completely showing my age. Um, but we also had like John Tesh one year, <laughs> you know, and like Trisha Yearwood and you, but you also had like. Smashing Pumpkins and The Black Crow. So, like, it's just a little of everything. Um, and then I actually went on a tour for a year and a half um, for Nickelodeon, um, which was Rugrats. <laughs> were you were a Rugrat? Dude, you just um, spoke I my entire childhood Reptar. right there. <laughs> um, I got to play Reptar because Reptar was a 26-foot-tall dinosaur that got pushed across the stage at the last five minutes of the, sh of the, the arena show. And this was like a live show. It wasn't on ice. But it was and um, basically the premise is Reptar comes alive at the end and terrorizes Angelica. If you under if you know all the characters on Rugrats, I, I do. Um, <laughs> that completely makes sense that you know, Reptar would be terrorizing Angelica. Um, but basically I was in the prop department on, and the touring scenic artists. So I had to like touch up all the paint. Um, on all the props in the set. And um, and it was kind of cool because Mark Mothersbaugh did all the music, so he came by during our rehearsals. But um, basically, I had to sit in Reptar's butt <laughs> during the last five minutes of the show as like 10 carpenters pushed me across the stage, freaked out the entire first three rows of five-year-olds <laughs> every show. Because <laughs> I'm like sitting there and great. I'm like, I'm like operating the arms and there's like a fire extinguisher next to me. So you can blow out smoke and there's like a button for like his eyes to light up so much fun. Um, and then the movie came out. And so we had to cut that, uh, cut the, the live show because the, the movie was less expensive. J looking yeah. at Jay's expression right now is amazing. And yeah, I, I, I feel you like in between Wait, tours or whatever. I, I, no, I, I, no, I, I, I walked, but no. <laughs> thanks. <Dan. laughs> <laughs> I, I walked back in in the list of like music right into Rugrats, uh, which was Rats. like, I, no, I so, you and I are right on the same wavelength with it. So yeah, my my thing was like I was a tour. I yeah, I started out like working like local bands and stuff, and you know, Dan and was I, a groupie joined, for the Rugrats. I, I I was I joined uh but I joined IATSE, you know the union so I would do yeah, the I, show I'm not a girl. I would do the shows at Giant Stadium and you know the Meadowlands Arena so I was there like front and center and then I just like for like the Grateful Dead and uh, Steve Miller Band, which was horrible. Metallica for freaking Bruce Springsteen for a million shows. It was just like a cool shit. But then, but yeah, but I was also on the road with a bunch of bands. 
And it was cool because I got to see places. You know, I mean, I, I mean, we got to do Meadowlands. I think that was one of our spots. Yeah, I mean, I worked with like yeah, it was like mostly like hard rock bands, and the the one band that I worked with was a band called Law and Order, and they were like yeah, this hard rock band from New York, but they were managed by Rush Artist Management, which is Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen, you know. So it was like yeah, so they were like the token like the only rock band. Later on, uh, they managed Biohazard, you know, Evan Seinfeld's old band. Um, sorry again, Tara. Sorry again, Tara. Um, and. Uh, you know, I mean, they had uh, later on another band, but you know, it was all like hip hop acts. I mean, it was like Public Enemy, and you know, you'd be sitting in the office, and like Chuck D comes in, or you know, Run DMC, you know, come in, or you know, Will, you know, Jazzy Jeff came in, you know, in the Fresh Prince, those guys came in. I mean, all these guys started there, so it was like, it was cool. And then it's just like weird. And when you talk to in the adult industry, right? There's so many people that came over from the music side of things, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a lot, or you know, or share the, or share music with it. So I I think it's cool. I mean, you know, we can't wait, you know, skin until you get your shit going and we can hear it. And it's like, you know, hopefully, you know, we talked, you know, about maybe someday, like when Exotica comes back, we want it to be more badass than ever, you know, and we're going to try and make it badass. So, you know, you don't care. You know, you just want to come and have fun, you know? Fuck yeah. Well, I'm really excited about the things that I'm going to be releasing just on my SoundCloud for free. Um, even though they're demos, they're really, really fun, really cool. Nice. Um, nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. It's just been, you know, one thing that is talked about but not as much as, I, as it should, I think, is just how fucking healing music is, you know? Like, it's it, it really does, like, take you out. Just, like, listening to music, creating music. I mean, even if you can't make music, just listening to music can completely change things. So I think it's really cool. I, yeah, really we, so we started doing that. this. Sh- yeah, we started doing this show. We had like the first few weeks on on the happy hours. We would have just like from Jersey, like local musicians just come on here and play a tune, and yeah. it was like really cool. And then we had uh, Constantine from uh, American Idol. American Idol, remember Constantine Marulis? <laughs> He was actually an uh, awesome. He was an awesome dude. He was in Rock of Ages on Broadway too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But like we were, that show actually lasted like an hour and a half. We were just sitting there like talking and shooting shit. And he was like, yeah, he was like totally macking over. Uh, who was it? Ray, oh, Ray, Ray of Sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah. Yeah, that night or whatever. And yeah, we had uh, my buddies. Uh, was in a band called Trickster back in the day. Oh my and, god, Trickster. Uh, <laughs> PJ Farley, the bass player. He's actually playing. He's on tour right now. They're actually doing some shows with uh, Fozzie, Chris wow. Jericho's band. But it's like, Good you Lord. know, it's like, you know, I, skin. I, right? I, I agree a hundred percent. Like I am a live music junkie and regardless of what kind of music, whether it be, you know, bluegrass to R and B to fucking hip hop to rock and roll to jam bands to whatever it, you know, there's something soothing about going, you know, the, not just like you go to a concert and like you're there with a bunch of people that are there specifically for the same reason you're there for, you know, and like it's kind of a magical experience. And it really it's such a bummer, man. Like it, it is I, you know, I had like my summer shows like scheduled out, set, ready to go. Like and at the end of the day, you know, it's it's definitely just one of those like huge missing chunks in the world, you know, like Don't to worry, not be Justin able to go Bieber, out and see those things. Bieber will be back in 21. Did you know that Justin, did you know that Justin Bieber's light guy is Fish's light guy? No. Wow. There you go. So raise your hand if you gave a fuck about that little tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would. But the beauty of it is, Dan, like it's I said, I can go to, when I go to that concert, I leave your kind of horribleness behind and I go to another bunch of like-minded people that are, there, you guys doing all the same, exact same thing. fucking tab of acid. What no. was the last? What was the last show you went to see that you can remember before we couldn't go to shows anymore? Um, Fish at Madison Square Garden, like December thirtieth. Oh, yep, and MSG okay. is an awesome venue to yep. to get out to. That was. I mean, Dan is probably very similar. Like, but do you go through like a phase where you're like, why am I? Why do I have to pay for a ticket? Because I said, so, you know, I got to a point where I was like, I work backstage at so many shows. I'll just wait until yeah. a concert I like will come through town. Yeah, it's I, have like, I have the whole thing. And I'm like pissed. Like the week that everything went into quarantine, I stopped going out for a while before that. Because I'm just like, yeah, like, I mean, I don't you know. There's not many people I really want to see. And He's so the old. week that everything shut down, I had tickets for um, that week, like that Wednesday for uh, Ann Wilson from Heart. 
was oh, wow. playing like this cool like theater by me. I mean, she's just amazing. And like th- that weekend, I was supposed to go see my buddies in Blind Melon. I used to, oh. I used to be, I used, that was the last band I tour managed. Um, yeah, before before Shannon outfit, passed away. So. Uh, huh? Now I need to see you in a Bumblebee outfit. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't the Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> I was not the but, Bumblebee. Yeah, but I was supposed to go see those guys, yeah, you know, play somewhere, and I was like psyched because I haven't seen them in you know years. You know, the other guys that are still in the band, you know, for years. So. And that shit got canceled. And, you know, it's all went I away. think it was my last show that I actually saw. Oh, I think it was either Ace Freely from Kiss or Zach. Bra- no, it was Ace Freely from Kiss. I saw him do a show. It was freaking horrendous. But um, I know there's a couple of people, especially like DJs, are like going and doing these like drive-in theater shows. Which actually, is a lot of a lot of musicians in general are doing it now. Yeah. They they're concept. doing that here. You sit in your car and then you get to watch them play on like the big screen. Yeah. Um, but they, you're but you're self contained in a car. It's <laughs> it's smart. something. But it's it's cool. Like for VIP parking, like the place that we were supposed to go see Ann Wilson from, um, is like you know a, a not for profit like you know county theater in Jersey, and you know they're they're struggling now you know and they just had to figure out too what to do. And they're going into like one of these giant mall parking lots, yeah, you know, and setting up like drive-in concerts in August. And what is it? The one um, who's it? Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, and they got like a comedian there. I forgot who the fuck the comedian. Oh, Jim Brewer and like some other shit. Like a Grateful Dead tribute band one night, a Queen band another night. I mean, they're it's just, they're, know, they're doing it for a car of five people. That's nothing. They're, they're doing it all over the country, and it's. Um, you know, it's a it's a cool adaptation, and I think I'd love to see it like continued. But at the same time, like it's only a band aid. <laughs> you know, how like you, it's like all right, cool. Like, like I'm happy to go, but you need you know walking into a club or like a concert venue or whatever. Like the feeling that you get is so much different than like walking into you know a, a, a drive in. You know, the drive ins are cool. I, I yeah. would Dude, go. What to was them. the last? How do you guys feel about driving to our shows? And <laughs> How do you feel about doing Exotica there? drive-ins? Yeah, and just have a stage that we're just yeah. standing on. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, the last show that I went to see, um, well, last year I I ended up um, winning tickets to see Ariana Grande at mm-hmm. the Staples Center, and then I also how do you win tickets? Where it was like a radio tickets. thing? Uh, no, it was um, Global Citizen. Okay. I, like, for a fluke because I was like I really want to see that <laughs> um, a global citizen is this thing where you like you do activism work and you earn yeah. points and then depending on how many points you get you can enter to win to see concerts yeah, which I guess really cool. does not happen anymore but um, and I also um, after that I, I came into tickets to see Bikini Kill at their first show in fucking forever and that was crazy Bikini so Kill amazing. I don't know them My- Last concert was a couple of years ago, but it was Janelle Monet at the Palms in Vegas, and it was so great because because the Palms is such an intimate space. But the best part was I went down there by myself because I didn't I don't know a lot of people here locally, and I didn't at the time. Um, and I was like, I'm just gonna go down there buy a ticket, just go in and have a good time. And as I walked up to the counter to purchase my ticket, their tour manager just so happened to be walking by the box office with like a handful of comps. And, and like everybody had already gone inside like and they were like, timing. oh, do you want one? So I got to go in for free. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> An amazing yes, show. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, man. I'm, I'm ready for it, man. I like I, 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 like, I'm a super introvert. Like I'm a hermity ass, like introvert, stay at home. I go out if I only have to. But even I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, it'd be so nice to sign and kind of like see somebody, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. versus like those like bullshit like kind of I have, we have friends here in the city and we'll go like meet in the park and you stay, you know, certain distance away and you have a conversation, have a drink, like whatever. But I just want to like sit down and, you know, chop it up, you know, and just like not worry Dude, about go this, out to like, dinner, like go out to dinner where it's not outside in 102 degrees, you know, and <laughs> just go out to dinner and have like a real meal and shit and, you know, go out and. You know, have drinks, have fun, go travel. Like, you know, just go somewhere, anywhere but here. Or even yeah, best, I go back to Exotica. Like, I have so many pe- travel plans for this year to, like, shoot at, like, really cool places. And I just, just all out the window. I'm listening. Yeah. yeah. I, I no, just, I, I, you know what? You know what would be the best? I would love right now if they could just say, you know what? 
we're doing a reset. Like January 1st, everything's going to be good. You know, we've gotten this thing figured out and like we're whatever. If you could just give us a date, you know what Imagine I mean? Imagine that, that New Year's Eve. That, that day to work towards, you know what I mean? Where it would just be like, you know, and but unfortunately that's not the case. We'd you blow know, up the world on New Year's Eve though. That's what kind of idiots we fucking are. Yes, yes we are. Welcome. It's just crazy. I'm in Japan right now. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> Trust me. You know? I, I've spent half of the summer up in Northern Vermont and uh, I'm like half an hour from Canada. It would just yeah. make a quick run. Like just, I mean, we would take a snowmobile trail like through the woods and I'll be in Canada and I should be safe. Yeah. But I got these freaking kids. They drag me down. The nice thing is I already had a bunch of masks before we were told to wear wear them because i'm japanese so. <laughs> we w- my first do you see that flash that what the fuck was it's that? all it's all lightning like oh shit. Uh, that's awesome. J- so yeah, jay's, been, jay's in philly i'm in northern new jersey so I'm he's like, about two hours south of me so that's coming to me i can't lose power again it's the worst dude, fucking it's, thing ever. it's like crazy out right now I like the thunder and stuff like, is like, like the, the, keep going the, we can't see completely changed yep oh. uh it's, it's a nice skylight, though. Thank you. He just wanted this to show is, the skylight. This is, my, glass, this is my hideaway. He's got a glass floor, too, nice Kelly. Right there, <laughs> look, he's got a glass floor. Like, under the see, look behind him. With, with still open. Yeah, what is with that floor? He's got disco lights under there, and he turns it into, like, freaking it's, dance fever. It's a glass floor. <laughs> Come on, Jake. It first. looks down through the house. Bounce. Yeah. Bounce. You see, I thought it was like he'll get girls to, like, walk around on top, and he, like, he's like, oh, I got to go downstairs for <sighs> Which a is all a great idea in Exotica World, except for the fact that outside of, like, say, some interviews and f- four weekends a year, I deal with, like, an 11-year-old daughter <laughs> and and an 8-year-old son. So, yes, it's it, it, it might not have been thought through 100%. I don't know. It's, um, yeah. We'll... I don't know. If you have any pets, because pets would be amazing on that glass. <laughs> we, we don't. You know what's funny is we... His wife's right? lemon tree behind him, and that's we, about it. We had had, we had dogs little... forever, and right before we redid our house and we're, we're doing this whole project... We were, our dog died. We were like, we'll wait until the house is done. Then we'll get the dog and like, whatever. During all that time, we realized we don't need a dog. Like it's, you know, we tra- three we, dogs in my house. We right travel now. so okay. much. And like, it's just, I, I miss having a dog. This is the first time since I was like 12 that I, you know, haven't had one. But at the end of the day, like if you're, you know, traveling a week or two a month, like not probably something you should, you know. Unless yeah. you're able to just fostering, because um, I don't, I don't know if I can adopt outright because who knows when the quarantine's gonna get lifted and I'll start traveling again. Right. And I don't like doing that to a dog. Um, cats seem to be a little bit more understanding of you being gone for a weekend. The dogs just freak out. That's so. because cats, cats want you to be gone. Cats don't give a shit about you. They're just like, all right, what, what? <laughs> no. Hey, wait, hold on, hold on. Does your does does okay. your cat care about you? When I was traveling a lot, I remember I had my case open. The gray one that you see that's, like, obsessed with me. Right. Why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> anyway, um, so I had my case open because I was unpacking, repacking, you know, the deal. I was probably doing exotic or something. And that motherfucker peed in my case. Just a pit, just he was in like, oh, spite. I you're going to you're like gonna smell me in- everywhere you go. That's- okay. So, so that, but that's spite. I'm talking about love, like the op, the opposite. Like, Jesus, I saw that. dude. I saw that. Everybody, crazy. if Exotica TV goes away or whatever, <laughs> it's been nice sorry. seeing everybody. Yeah, apologize. Yeah. Make sure you visit these ladies at only on their social media. But continue. I'm gone. Oh my God, man! It's I'm I'm in the bell tower yeah, right now. Kind of, I, I might. But that's die. kind of why I'm thinking about fostering because you know. Yeah. I have a better idea for you, Kelly. Ready? So I have my dog. My dog really doesn't like other dogs that much. She's very selective in her company. She thinks she's a cat, actually. Mm-hmm. But why don't you do Rover.com? Rover.com. What's Rover.com? Take care of people's. They you could they, they stay with you. They're dogs. You get paid like money for them. The problem with that is then you have to deal with with the humans. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. The animals. That's I, so, so I'll that's so the hey, problem. Man. That's so. <laughs> That is a hundred percent true. Anytime yeah. that you can cut off like the human interaction out of like a, a dog thing, it's the best. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's like that. So you know what? Before Jay gets electrocuted here and his computer blows up, we better freaking wrap this thing up. And it has been an hour-ish. 
It's an hour and six minutes ish. So. You did it! Congratulations, ladies. Nice guys, job. Guys, thank guys, you so thank much. Thank you so for... much, both of you, for joining us. Skin, thank remind you. everybody where, where they can find you on social media. Uh, you can find me on um, Instagram, RayJoyCats. Twitter, skin underscore diamonds. And you can find all of my music on railandjoy.com. It, just go to my Instagram. There's links for everything. That's that's what's cool. cool. <laughs> and uh, Kelly. Um, I've been saying this for over a decade, but I am extremely stalker friendly. I'm Kelly Shabari everywhere. Um, Dude, and, that is, uh, I, I, there very rarely do I get to put up like, one one line of text yeah, and like to the all other. the logos Kelly next Shabari, to it. Yeah. Shabari, Kelly Shabari, yes. Kelly Shabari. I'm impressed. Um, and then the website with the links to all of like my OnlyFans, my Sex Panther, my clips for sale, and everything else is clubkellyshabari.com. That's some OG shit right there. All right. Awesome. Thank you and so Jay, much, guys. Right? Where we can, they can find us. They can find us at Exotica, <sighs> at Exotica TV, and everywhere but Instagram because Instagram. Has us. pulled the plug on us. They hate they us. Hate us. My weekly plea. You thought I wasn't going to do it, Jay. Anybody that can get us our Instagram back. With What's our the bounty back, up to, Dan? What are, what are we willing uh, what, to pay? What, what week is this? Week 19? 19. $1,900. Okay. There you go. You're a mad get man. It to, get it back It's for all us. coming out of Dan's paycheck. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back next week. Uh, <laughs> what do we have next week? I think we have April O'Neil next week. Okay. Oh, I love it. She's April awesome. O'Neil and I think uh oh and Alex Cole I think next week. Holy cow. Oh, cool. Jeez. Here Just on the happy hour. Guys, go to uh, exoticaexpo.com to see our rescheduled dates or our dates that are probably never happening in 2020. <laughs> um unless you people start wearing a fucking mask. Wear a fucking mask. Seriously. Fucking not mask. that hard. Wear a mask. Like, go to their OnlyFans. Oh my stay god. Stay safe. What else are they going to do, Jay? We're they're they're going to stay sexy, Danny boy. Have fun, everybody. See you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.